Hey folks, Mr. Lackey here with this week's video, bringing you a little bit of the metric system because that's going to be one of the first things we need to get started. Hopefully you already read the description where we talked about the ways you could follow along. You have either printed out a document or made a Google Doc copy of it, or maybe you're just going to follow along with pencil and paper and you're going to address these five questions. They were in the assignment or you could pause it now and write them down, but I'm going to go ahead and move on. Um, so looking at the metric system, we're going to answer some of those questions that we just saw on the previous slide. First, we're just going to talk about like, what's the big deal? Well, how come every time I go to science class, everybody's using the metric system, but every other part of my life, we're not using the metric system. In science, everywhere in the world, everybody uses the metric system. It's kind of like a universal language. So no matter what country people are in, whatever language they're speaking, they are using the metric system. And that's really helpful because then you can look at research done in Korea or in Afghanistan or in Canada and you can say, what measurements did they use? They used the metric system. I can understand these measurements. Um, in America, we don't. We use something else called the English system, even though England doesn't use that system. That's what we use. And we use more confusing units like inches, and miles and feet and uh, we'll talk in a minute about why is that so confusing compared to the metric system so really if we say why is science being so difficult why do they have to measure everything in the metric system the truth is actually science is just getting along with the rest of the world america is the one being difficult by not using the metric system um, one of the big keys, one of the things that's going to be so awesome about the metric system is that it uses units of 10. We're going to have some examples here where we talk about money to compare those units of 10. Um, one of the great things about that is we can easily convert from one metric unit to another because everything is just a step of 10. Um, I like to use our money system as a comparison. Like basically, if I have a penny, I need 10 of those to make a dime. And then if I have a dime, I need 10 of those to make a dollar, right? So every step as we move up is just a multiply by 10. Um, I'll give you some more concrete examples of it, but that means it's really easy for me to convert. I can say like, okay, well, if I've got a dollar bill, that means I've got 10 dimes or 100 pennies, right? So it's a pretty quick multiplier or conversion because it's just steps of 10. If you think about our system of measuring distances here in America, we say, okay, well, one foot is made of 12 inches. And if I want to measure miles, I got to say, okay, how many feet are in a mile? Wouldn't it be nice if it was a thousand instead of some random number like 5,280, right? That's why the metric system is so sweet. When I go from meters to kilometers, boom, it's a thousand. I know right away how many are in that step. I don't have to memorize some random number. Um... We are going to actually, it says we're going to do some converting. We're actually going to save the converting for tomorrow. So if you attend your live lesson tomorrow with either me or Mr. Holderman, we're going to do some converting together because that seems like something that might be helpful to do live so you guys can ask us questions. Um, we're going to talk a bit today about um, those main reasons. So I kind of just covered them. The first one are that it's really easy to use. It's really easy to convert from one unit to another. And also the default unit is just, it's the standard. Everybody else uses it. We should point out, technically, the metric system isn't any more accurate. You can still do amazing things using our English system. So using our inches and miles and feet, you can still calculate perfectly accurate measurements in that way. It just won't easily line up with the rest of the world and nobody else will know what you're talking about if they're not American. Um, in the metric system, there are three base units. These base units just means like default. If I go back to my example of money, the base unit in our money system is the dollar. If you want to say, hey, how much does that cost? They don't say, oh, it costs 50 dimes, right? Or they don't say it costs half of a $10 bill. They say, oh, it costs $5 or, you know, it, whatever the measurement is. $5,000. It's given to you in dollars. That's the base unit of our economy. In the metric system, there are three base units, only instead of measuring money, they're measuring things like length. So the meter is the base unit of length. So you guys, I'm sure, have probably seen a meter stick before, and that just measures exactly one meter. 
If you want to measure a further distance, instead of going to miles, they go to kilometers. And if they go to smaller distances, they go to centimeters and millimeters. Um, the other base units that we will get into this year are liters. Liters measure how much space something takes up. So actually, um, a good example here, the base unit, the liter, I have a uh, water bottle here that measures about one liter. That's That was the measurement when I bought this thing. So in here, that's how much space is inside the bottle. So if I fill it up with water, that's how much water I have is I have one liter of water. Um, the last one is how they measure mass. We measure mass in things like pounds and ounces in America, but the rest of the world uses grams. Grams are actually pretty light. Like I was looking for an example in my desk and I have actually just a, a coin here. It probably weighs about a gram. It's not so much different than say a paper clip or so. Um, it's a pretty light measurement. Oh, I actually, I'm gonna go back to that slide real quick. I wanna point out the abbreviations are right there. There's meter is abbreviated with a lowercase m, gram with a lowercase g, and then liter with a capital L. I don't know why it gets capitalized, but it does. Okay, in the lab, our measurements uh, always need to have two things. They need to have a number, and then they need to have a unit. Of course, that makes sense. I know we're not necessarily doing labs in person, but the big focus of today when we're talking is we're talking about those units. What exactly does it mean if I say I have 50 milligrams versus 50 grams? What's the difference when I say that? That's a pretty important difference. Um, if you're following along on the handout, this would be the part where we start talking about converting. We're actually going to skip this and talk about it tomorrow. So you're going to kind of skip a little further down if you're following along on the Google Doc or you printed out a handout. We will look real quick at this metric conversion chart. I want to point out to you guys, this is a great way to memorize the metric conversion chart or write it out for yourself. We have lots of students who write out, draw a little staircase, and then they just write the first letter of each one here. So they'll write K, H, D, B, D. And each one of those stands for something longer. So kilo, hecto, deca. Base unit is what goes right in the middle. So that's where your gram would go on this scale or your meter would go. And that's what also comes after this prefix. So if we were talking about units of length, the gram would be in the middle and the step down from the gram would be called the decigram. Two steps down from the gram would be called the centigram. Right? So as you're going through those, whatever your base unit is, that's what fills in after the blank for each one of the prefixes. Um, again, I'm going to show you my money example if we talk about dollars. Remember that each step on the metric scale is a multiplier of 10. So if I have $1 as my base unit, as I move up the scale, if I, I wanted to move up, I'd need $10, and then I have a $10 bill. If I got 10 of those $10 bills, I'd have a $100 bill. Same thing, I can move the opposite way. I could break my $1 into 10 pieces, and those 10 pieces would be dimes. I could break each dime into 10 more pieces, and those tinier pieces would be pennies, right? You can also measure big steps easily. So I can say, oh, to go from a penny to a dime, I need 10 pennies. But if I want to go two steps, it's 10 times 10. I need 100 pennies to get two steps up. If I want to get to a $10 bill, that's three steps. One, two, three, that's 10 times 10 times 10. I need a thousand pennies to go three steps up and so on, right? So I can even measure quickly how many pennies would I need for a $100 bill, or if I broke down a $100 bill, how many pennies would it make? We will get into that tomorrow if that felt fast to you, but that's just a comparison I like to use. A memory trick for memorizing the order of that step is this saying, King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. If you remember that little sentence, it tells you the order of the metric chart. So each letter here represents a letter on that step. So K for kilo, so let's go back to that real quick. So K, kilo for king, King Henry died. The B is for base unit. So King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. So let's say you had a test and you weren't given this and you wanted to write it down on a piece of paper and get it out of your brain real quick. Or let's say you took physics next year and you wanted that conversion chart. As long as you remember King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk, you could draw a little staircase and you could easily do some conversions in the metric system. Um, even nicer than this 
is that actually only a few of those prefixes are important. In chemistry and pretty much all of science, we're only going to focus on four steps on that scale, and pretty much the other ones will never be used. Um, I made some little clues here for you to figure out which is which. So the first one is going to be a crown. That's part of the step, so that's K for king. Uh, if you've been following along, that was the first step, which was kilo. So king at the very top, the first step was kilo. The next one is chocolate. So King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. That was the next to last step. Can you go ahead and figure out which one does that chocolate represent? Senti. That's right. It's the next to last step. It was senti. Now the very last one is the next is the final one on that scale. So this was king chocolate. The final one on the scale, the milk. That's milli. And then we've got ice cube. Uh, I don't think there was any eyes on the scale. I don't remember why I would have ice cube, except for you might recognize this is him in his famous line. Bye, Felicia. Bye. Bye was right in the middle. King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. The B in bye stands for base unit. We measure things in base units a lot also. So you'll measure things in grams or in liters or in meters. Um, so these are the four steps of that chart to get used a lot. The other ones that I didn't mention here, the deci, the deca, the hecto, you'll pretty much never hear those used. Um, very rarely do those get brought into measurements. So we're going to wrap up today by talking about how do we abbreviate things. We actually already talked about three of the things on this list. The meter, the gram, and the liter, those are the base units. They only require one letter. We already said that the meter and the gram are a lowercase m and g, and then a capital L for liter. Again, anytime liter appears in an abbreviation, that L will always be capital, whether it's the first or second letter, and it's the only time we capitalize things in our metric abbreviations. Otherwise, when you see something longer like kilogram, all you have to do is take the first letter of the prefix, and the first letter of the base unit. So the abbreviation for kilogram would just be kg, and they'd both be lowercase because we write everything in lowercase for the abbreviations. Except for one exception, let's do that one. A milliliter, that would be m, little m for milli, and big L for liter. So you would write m, big L for the abbreviation. All right, I want you guys to try this third one on your own. So if I have kilometer, what would the abbreviation be for that? It should be K for kilo, M for meter. How about if you had the, the one right below it, another type of meter, if I had a centimeter, what should be the abbreviation there? You should get C for centi, M for meter. Um, how about then, what if I did a different one and I said, Let's say, I'll give you one that's the opposite way. So here's a question where I give you the abbreviation. You tell me what it stands for. Okay, we didn't quite do all of these, but hopefully you should be able to figure out the difference between each of these. They are pretty straightforward. We will have a little review in the middle of the week where you have to do some abbreviations where you tell me what the abbreviations are for things and work the opposite way. If this is giving you trouble and you're having questions, Maybe put that in your mind, and when we get to our live class tomorrow, you can remember to ask me or Mr. Holderman about it as we're working on our other practice problems, okay? We'll see you guys in live class tomorrow. Bye. Hey folks, Mr. Lackey's here with, well, let's try that again. <laughs>